Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania, back with another episode. Tonight, the blue brand celebrates 25 years of Triple H in the WWE, but you can be certain there will be lots more going on as Money in the Bank approaches. Join us now as WrestleMania analyzes the 24th April edition of Friday Night SmackDown, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including WWE stock on the rise, the latest on the Velveteen Dream scandal, and more. As always, WrestleMania isn't going to recap the matches, but look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. The Good – Elevating the Forgotten Sons The WWE did a lot of good things tonight, beginning with the Forgotten Sons laying out the New Day. The Sons are too early in the run on SmackDown to make any predictions, but this could be a good start if the WWE wants to push them as a team. Building Bayley vs. Banks the WWE continued the build for the eventual breakup of BFFs Bayley and Sasha Banks while also helping to put Lacey Evans over. Right now, there's no room for Evans in the women's title picture, but a win over Banks is big and should help continue her push on the blue brand. The rebuilding begins. The WWE's women's tag team division is a wreck, despite a number of potentially good teams. Now that Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are tag team champions once again, it appears WWE may be spending more time rebuilding what could and should have been a good way to showcase female superstars not involved in chasing the Raw or SmackDown women's singles titles. While Carmella and Dana Brooke may not be the stuff of legend when it comes to teams, you have to start somewhere. Winning in Defeat Drew Gulak's build continued tonight, and while a loss to King Corbin might seem like a setback, Gulak looked good during the match and only lost due to a distraction by Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Drew's career continues to grow, and tonight's loss was helpful to showing how much he's improved in such a short time on SmackDown. Celebrating 25 Years of the Game Sometimes it's hard to believe that Triple H has been in the WWE for 25 years or to take stock of his many achievements in and out of the ring. While critics may scoff at his achievements given his marriage into the McMahon family, a critical look at Helmsley's accomplishments show a strong performer who was strong as a babyface or heel and who helped take NXT to new heights behind the scenes. The tribute to Trips featured lots of laughs and some surprise appearances, including FaceTime appearances by Stephanie McMahon and Ric Flair, as well as live appearances by Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon. The Bad Are The Miz and Morrison in the doghouse? Looking at the last two weeks of SmackDown, it seems like the WWE is punishing The Miz for showing up to the Performance Center when he was sick a few weeks ago, with several reports claiming this is what led to Roman Reigns pulling out of WrestleMania 36. How else to explain The Miz and Morrison dropping their SmackDown Tag Team Championship in a singles match, or the greatest tag team of the 21st century dropping a match to the Lucha House Party, a talented team, but not one you usually associate with as anything more than enhancement talent for other teams? The Downright Ugly Like last week's show, this edition of the Blue Brand provided some good matches, furthered angles such as Money in the Bank qualifiers, the deteriorating relationship of Bailey and Banks, and the build-up to The Fiend vs. Braun Strowman. Did the final Triple H segment run a bit long? Perhaps, but it's likely to do better in the ratings than anything else. News Scandalous allegations made against Velveteen Dream Current NXT star Velveteen Dream, aka Patrick Clark, is facing accusations that he sent inappropriate messages with an audio recording to underage girls including a nude photo of himself. A Reddit user claimed this and the story was picked up by several news sites including Figure 4 Weekly, which is reporting, The allegation surfaced when a Reddit user claimed that Dream was sending them and their friends messages of a sexual nature through Instagram direct messages. The Reddit user posted a censored screenshot of a nude picture that Dream allegedly sent them and claimed that Dream blocked them after they wouldn't send him a nude picture back. The Reddit user wrote that they were 17 years old and their friends were 15 and 16. Dream tweeted a denial. Be assured that I did not communicate inappropriately with anyone. A private photo of mine was shared without my consent or knowledge and I'm working with a third party to look into this matter. These are serious allegations, but individuals are innocent until proven guilty, that is, except in the court of public opinion. WrestleMania will continue following this story. Velveteen Dream's Recent Brush with the Law 
Ringside News seemed to be of the belief that where there's smoke, there's fire, recently reporting on a case from 2019 involving Velveteen Dream. On November 30th, 2019, a man named Edgar Rodriguez reported criminal mischief, and Velveteen Dream was a person of interest. Rodriguez's 2015 Infiniti QX70 was parked on North Magnolia Avenue. When he got back to the car, he discovered that his driver's window was smashed. This was caught by the building's surveillance system. The footage showed a man who looked like it could have been Velveteen Dream. The culprit was wearing a pink shirt and dark-colored pants, and he was motioning as if he was smashing a window. Then, this alleged culprit took off in a blue Ford Mustang. Dream was allegedly identified in a lineup, and a warrant for his arrest was issued on 11th February. However, on that same day of February 11th, it was stated by the state of Florida that after an investigation, it was the opinion of the writer this case is not sustainable for prosecution. The order stated that Velveteen Dream would be released, and if he was incarcerated, no other charges or holds should be held against him. No details on why the case was deemed not suitable for prosecution and conjecture led to any number of possibilities. WWE Stock Surges WWE stock has surged following the positive Quarter 1 financial earnings report. See our recent news video for more details. Yahoo Finance reports the stock closed today at $44.79, up $5.72, plus 14.64% from yesterday. WWE talent upset with working during pandemic? Not too long ago, a person claiming to be a WWE employee asked Orange County officials, the county in Florida where the WWE Performance Center is based, to shut down the Performance Center, claiming the conditions were unsafe, yet employees were forced to work there. Apparently, some WWE talent are concerned as well, with Dave Don't Call Me Tuna Meltzer claiming in this week's Wrestling Observer, I can verify there were talents in the company who expressed concerns, and others who recognize the risks and are concerned, but have said from a WWE standpoint they don't think there is any kind of solution that is good, including shutting down because of so many issues with that decision economically. The situation will become a real problem if one or more wrestlers become sick with the disease, causing so many businesses to shut down. However, the WWE isn't the only company continuing to produce wrestling in Florida. AEW resuming live shows? Now that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has ruled that professional wrestling is an essential business, yes, we here at WrestleMania still laugh when we hear this, All Elite Wrestling will resume airing live shows. Diamond Dave Meltzer is reporting that AEW is also going back, likely to live programming in a few weeks, which would put them in the same situation. While this could also change depending on the circumstances, and they have enough taped to last for several more weeks, the plan right now is for AEW to go back either weekly or more often, starting on 5-6 from Daly's Place in Jacksonville. AEW deserves just as much criticism as the WWE for running wrestling events, if you believe it's too high risk to do so. What do you think about the WWE and AEW's policies on running shows? Let us know in the comments below. NXT Japan dead? The WWE's efforts to launch an NXT division in Japan appear to be over. According to the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, with all the cutbacks, Tokyo Sports reported that NXT Japan is dead. Tony Khan locking down the AEW checkbook? With the WWE releasing a number of superstars, fans are curious whether All Elite Wrestling will snatch up some of them. Recently, Rick Bogner, who owns Face to Face Wrestling Academy, now run by recently released WWE talent Heath Slater, talked about potential hires. Not during this time period, no. The smartest guy out there right now, and I've never met him, is probably Tony Khan. He took the checkbook away when they first started up. Cody was out there, and the contract offers were a little crazy from what I understand, and Tony took the checkbook and has taken over all hiring. I think whoever is advising him on signings is doing a really good job. I think they're going to pick up some key guys, and I think everyone is certain Zack Ryder is going there. I think another person who would fit well in AEW is Drake Maverick. I think anywhere that guy goes is money just for personality. WrestleMania is confident that AEW will eventually hire Zack Ryder, who is friends with Cody Rhodes and has much to offer AEW, and that Rusev, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows will be welcomed with open arms if they choose to go to AEW. One other name to consider is EC3, who recently posted a video of himself working out to the sound of Fozzie's Judas in the background. Ethan Carter III is friends with Jericho, and while AEW can't, and likely won't, hire every former WWE talent, EC3 brings much to the table, as seen by his run in Impact.
Wrestlers may have to take a pay cut until the business stabilizes, and no recently released WWE star can work until 15th July due to their contract's no-compete clause. Did WWE try to ban Chris Jericho from WWE Toy Exhibit? Last but not least, the competition between AEW and the WWE seems to be hotter than ever, and it's even happened in the unlikeliest place, the recent New York Toy Fair. Appearing on the Major Wrestling Figure podcast, Jericho talked about how he wanted to check out the WWE's toy exhibit, only to be informed he wasn't allowed in. Le Champion described what happened next. Let me give you the other side of the coin. I was downstairs and I wanted to see what the WWE set up, and they told me I couldn't. I was like, the f I can't, I've made these guys millions of dollars in action figures, you're telling me I can't go up there? So I walked up there and there was a security guard who wouldn't let me in, but there was a guy who works for whoever WWE works with, like, ah, come on in. I went in and I was filming stuff for my Instagram story, like, oh, here I am at the horror comic stuff and here I am at WWE. He's like, please don't post that, I could lose my job. I was like, is this where we're at? You're gonna lose your job because you let the enemy in just to look? By the way, it was a really sh** setup that WWE had compared to our setup. I was very surprised. With the wild and funny life he leads, is it any wonder Chris Jericho already has four memoirs out? Well guys, there you have it, WrestleMania's analysis of the 24th April Smackdown, as well as the wildest wrestling news stories and rumors you need to know. Did you watch tonight's show? If so, what did you think? Be sure to leave your comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time for some more wrestling content.